Hey there, CNCers, Scott here again for CNC Labs. With the World Cup in full swing, we thought we would throw together a, you know, quick and dirty project for all of the soccer, beer drinking fanatics that are out there. So, here we are, our beautiful beer flight. So the next time you're hosting all your, you know, soccer friends, they can raise a glass and then put it down here. Ha! <laughs> Follow along. Alrighty folks, we are in on shape. Uh, I'm gonna show you some of the variables that we've, Andy has been nice enough to program into your beer flight to make it whatever size and shape you want. And a quick little tutorial on how to export it because this is a pretty simple project. So the thickness variable that is over here is just the thickness of your material. Pretty self-explanatory as they mostly are. The hole diameter is because we found out that when you Google standard pint glass shape, or size, there is no standard pint glass. So we threw in a variable so that you can put in whatever size and shape you need. The overall length and the overall handle length are also pretty self-explanatory. So you can monkey with those however you want to. And the whole spacing is just the spacing between those pint glasses, which depending on your pint glass, you know, you may want to mess with. So it's just as simple as a double click on it, changing your number, hitting your green check mark, and then you are good to go for your variables. The next step is to select one of the surfaces in on shape. Typically I use, you know, the top or the big flat ones. You left click on the shape, you right click and you go to export as D X F D W G. That was a lot of letters. <laughs> it's going to ask you what you want to call it, what format and where you want to save it. You are going to change it if you need to, and then you are going to hit export. And because there are only two pieces to this project, I'm going to do both. There is the leg. The legs are identical. You'll only need to export one. Left click, right click, export again. It's gonna ask you what you wanna call it. We're all good, we're gonna hit export. And that is it for Onshape. Pretty self-explanatory, pretty simple, but you know, now you know. Next, we are going to jump over into VCarve. We will import, create tool paths and save out tool paths. And again, pretty simple, but let's go there. Alrighty, here we are in VCarve, and because I've already created a couple of these, my stuff's probably gonna pop up and already be done, but I will run you through all the settings just so that we're all familiar with what's going on. So we are gonna create a new file, and as I said, it's actually longer than it's supposed to be. So let's call it 26. Because you may or may not use exactly what we're handing you, you might wanna change it. Adjust your file size to whatever you need. Do 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 we're gonna hit OK. The next thing we're going to do is we are going to import our vectors, this little folder guy right here. From there, I am going to go to the right folder, which is there. There's my Onshape exported files. And there is my main part and my foot. So I'm gonna bring in the main, hit open. Again, we've gone through this. I don't know why that pop-up comes up, but just say yes. <laughs> With all of your stuff selected that it brings in, we are going to go to the join open vectors command. We're gonna click on that. You can see that, you know, some are open. And once we hit join, it will go to zero, which is exactly what we're looking for. You can group it if you want to. This one's not too big a deal, but now that it's grouped, that was this command or the little icon right here. You can move everything when you double click, it'll just slide over there. And like I said in the last tutorial, you can F9 it and it will center it to the piece. We are going to then import the foot, which we will need two of folks. So don't forget to make a copy of one. We are going to join those open vectors again. We're gonna hit join. We're gonna get rid of that. And now we have two feet. So the way that I set this up was to maximize as much of this board as we could so we didn't have to waste any wood. And I guess you don't have to rotate them, but that's just what I did because I saw Andy do it. <laughs> From here, again, this is a pretty quick hitter project. So hopefully you're not having any trouble following along. We are going to create the inside tool paths first because we want to do our insides before our outsides so that parts don't go flying and things don't come, you know, disconnected and all of that. So we're going to select all of the, oh, sorry. Oh, that's my mistake. We have to ungroup before we can create this tool path because you can't have uh, inside and outside cuts within a group. It won't let you do that. So we are going to grab all of our inside cuts, which are anything that's a cup hole and these 
decorative little foot liner uppers. That's what these two capsule shaped ones are. That's so you can line your feet up either centered or, you know, justified left or right. That's up to you. Uh, I think, yeah, I did mine centered just because that's <laughs> what I wanted to do. And then we are going to go and create a profile tool path, which is this guy here. And the thickness variable, set it to whatever you need and on shape. If you change your mind here, it's not the end of the world because there's not really, uh, it's not like uh, the step stool project where we had parts slotting together. Uh, so it's not as big a deal to worry about that thickness and change it after. Uh, in this case, we're going to call it 0.75 because that's what my material is. Uh, we are going to use a quarter inch down cut end mill for this whole project, which is lovely. No bit changes. We're going to go into the edit. I'm going to go a quarter inch per pass because I'm using cherry but I also did it on pine and it didn't really start up. Those quarter inch tool bit or those quarter inch router bits are pretty sturdy. A step over not worrying about, spindle speed is fine and the feed rate and the plunge rate. I'm gonna put them right in the kind of middle of the road. You can speed this up with G sender if you want to. You shouldn't need to go any slower than this. Uh, so we'll leave it there for now. We're gonna okay that. We are gonna call these inside tool paths so that they go inside. We are going to use climb as the direction. Uh, as I have said in previous tutorial videos, I like tabs. If you don't like tabs, feel free not to click here and to follow this. If you do like them, then follow along. Uh, we're gonna make them a quarter inch long by 0.15 thick. I'm going to go in here to edit. And so this is, again, another one of, the things, another one of those things. You can use a constant number or you can place them manually. Uh, if you wanna place them manually, once you're in this toolpath tab, you can just see it'll turn into a little check mark there. And there it goes. And then you can place them manually, or you can just add a constant number. For this one, because it's fairly simple stuff, I'm just gonna hit constant number of three. I'll hit add tabs, and you'll see the little bloop bloop bloops pop up all over. Again, this is a personal preference thing. I like tabs, it keeps the part from, once you get through and you cut through, uh, it keeps that part from rattling around and kind of getting stuck with your router bit. And you know, it can even actually shift your workpiece. Those clamps are pretty sturdy. So your work hold method is a factor. If you use glue, maybe you don't have to worry as much. I like clamps, so I'm gonna use tabs. We are gonna close out of that menu. We are going to add ramps to our tool path because it just saves wear and tear on your bits. So that's pretty much a must. Uh, well, I do it anyway. Half inch seems to good. And then we are going to name this. So we're going to call this Beer Flight. Ooh, it helps if I can type. Flight. And I'm going to call this Inside Paths because that's what it is. And then I'm going to hit this awesome calculate button. Bing! And it's going to give you a preview. I'm going to go and do the next outside tool path before I calculate and show the whole preview just because that's how I work. And so that's what we're going to do. We're going to select the three things that are outside tool paths. We're going to go back here and create another profile. The awesome part is everything's already set up for us with the exception of changing your machine vector to outside instead of inside. Oh, and I guess you got to add tabs too. <laughs> uh, so let's add our tabs again. Same stats for those edit tabs. This one, because I've already made a couple of these and found out that my, just the way they cut, the tabs weren't in the right spot and, and the legs actually broke free and shifted the workpiece and it caused some gouges. You'll see that later. Um, I'm going to manually place these because, you know, there could be a weak spot in some of these places. So I'm not going to do a constant number. I am going to add somewhere. I know that there's going to be clamps and keeping things happy together. Let's sing a song. Louie's gonna cut that in for me. Do, 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 do. Anyway, so that's terrible. So I'm just adding some tabs manually around here. If you wanna go constant number, knock yourself out. Once that's done, we're gonna close out. As always, we will add our ramps automatically half an inch and we will re rename this path to Beer Flight, and this is uh, Outside Paths. There we go. We're gonna hit Calculate, and then I always just hit Reset Preview just as a default to make sure there's nothing weird there, and we are gonna preview all visible tool paths, and you will see that, yeah, see this is where right here, um, where the two tool paths come together, with the actual board and the legs, it got a little hairy in there and the 
tabs were holding it in, they didn't hold it in and it snapped out. And <laughs> again, <laughs> it got a little gougy and that's what sandpaper is for, but if you don't have to use it, why not? So uh, the only other suggestion I can give for this portion is if you want to be really sure, you can come in and you can create a, whoop, my number lock fell off. There we go. If you create a circle that is, if you're using a quarter inch bit, quarter inch, you can whoop, it drop it in there and you can just make sure because you know that's how big your outer bit's going to be so you can test it out to make sure there's enough clearance to come through here. You can see that it will clear both but it's going to chew out any wood in there. It's not going to leave you any spot for a tab. So that's a little hint and a little tip if you want to use it that you can fake it and then delete it when you're done. Having said that, we are at the point where we will not, oh I hit a button that I shouldn't hit. Get out of here. We are at the point where we're going to save some tool paths. We are going to, because we're using a quarter inch bit for both of them, we don't have to do a bit change, so we can save both uh, G-code files within the same one. It will do the insides, then it will do the outsides, and you will be happy because it's like 12 minutes worth of carving at that. We're going to select both of our tool paths. We're going here to our save tool path. Visible tool paths to one file is what we're going to pick. And like we talked about in the, I believe it was the step stool one, it will show you within this tool path to be saved area. If you have two different size tool bits, an eighth and a quarter, it'll give you a red flag and say, hey, you're not allowed to do that because it's not doing a, a bit change or yeah, it's not doing a bit change. So because we're both using quarter inches for the inside and the outside, it's happy. We have both selected. We have the inside happening first and the outside happening second, which is how we want. We are going to save the tool path. We are going to save that into G code and preview images and beer flight. And I'm going to call this one. Oh, look at it. <laughs> it's already in there because I've already made one. Uh, I'm just going to save over the, am I going to save over it? Yeah, it's about the same thing. You know, what? I'm not going to save over it, but I called it all paths because then you guys have all the paths in one file and everyone's happy. We hit save, but I'm going to hit cancel because I'm not saving over it. And then we hit close and we are done with V carve. So a couple of hints, pretty simple project. Next, we're gonna load this up in G-Sender, which is super quick and easy. Then we'll zero and we'll start cutting this beast out and we're getting close to finished. Stick around. Alrighty, G-Sender. This should be pretty quick and easy. If you haven't done a tutorial with this before, then I'm glad I'm including it so you know what to do. And if you have, then you already should know what to do. So we're just going to connect our machine, which I'm already connected up here, right there. We are going to load the file. And in this case, it is the Beer Flight All Paths, which has our inside and outside tool paths. We are going to open it. it mm, does it look different? Nope, it looks the same. Wonderful. <laughs> That's about it for G Sender, guys. You load it up. You, if you have an Auto Zero touch plate, you knock yourself out. Uh, with my particular piece, I was using a piece of live, live edge cherry, so I wasn't able to necessarily use the Zero touch plate for the X and Y. Um, you'll see when I set it up that I used a set square to kind of make sure I had the right dimension of wood. I think it was six and a half or seven inches that I made the actual project on. And I made sure I had seven solid inches all the way across so that, um, you know, it wasn't carving off in the air. <laughs> I also make sure that I hit that outline button in G Center because I wasn't paying attention because Louis was here distracting me when we were filming and, <laughs> and I didn't zero out my X and my Y. So it started going off and outlining somewhere different. I went, aha, uh -huh, learning moment. So uh, we reset it and we were off and running. So make sure you hit that outline button to check. It will also give you a good indication um, if you're using a dust shoe, whether or not it's going to bump into your clamps, which can also cause trouble. And if if anybody wants to see what my dust shoe looks like, it's got some pretty nasty war wounds out of it. So um, use that outline tool for your, to make things, you know, just double check. Other than that, um, I use the backside of my Auto Zero touch plate for my Z, Z, wherever you're from, uh, just to get the right height. I outlined, I have, like I said, the quarter inch down cut end mill in there. And once you have it loaded, once you have it zeroed, once you have it clamped and you're happy, once you're outlined to make sure you're good, you hit start job, you sit back and watch the chips fly and you get yourself really sweet beer flight that we will then construct next. I will talk my way through what I'm doing just because then you'll know what I'm doing. 26. You can keep up with my name just done. <laughs> by watching that, I know that when it gets to here, it's going to hit this clamp with that dust shoe, so I'm going to do that one over there.
bolts. So with this particular version that I cut out, uh, I didn't want to use a roundover bit on these edges because it's a pretty sweet piece and look, uh, you know, inch thick, 100 year old barn board. And I didn't want to lose any of that kind of patina that you get with it. So as you can see, it works out really nicely with the original files because everything is, how do we go? Nice and flush, there we go. So we didn't have to modify the legs. So in case you don't want to use a roundover bit, uh, like we did with the cherry version, the legs are nice and smooth, straight up, out of the box, throw a glass on there, have a drink. There you have it folks, easy peasy beer flight squeezy so you can get this project banged out and get back to, you know, watching some more of the pitch. We hope you found it helpful, we hope you had a good time, and if you didn't, you know, throw a red card or comment down below. As always, we've got more cool content coming out, so make sure you are subscribed, bing, and um, we'll see you around the CNC. Wait, that's the wrong sport. <laughs> See you around, folks. This is so much fun. Yeah, so much the weather's fun. been great lately. Yeah, it yeah. is. I really like the fog. Hey. 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 hey you got drinky drinkies. Cheers. Oh. Cheers. Drinky drinky. Okay. Go. Are you sure we're recording, right? <laughs> oh, fuck you, Louie. I totally forgot to start screen recording. <laughs> Guess what we get to do again? Fuck. Thank you. You're welcome. I am recording. That's wonderful. <laughs> yeah. Okay. Let's give her a go.